People think you enter a show like you buy a lottery ticket and if you don't win it's a waste of time. Well it's not a waste of time if you don't win a prize. It's to be in the show is the main thing, to get the work seen, that's, that's, that's the main thing. The public probably think you're crazy because it's like being a gambler. You're <laughs> You're paying all these entry fees and you usually get turned down. It's only by doing lots of them, chances are you'll, uh, you'll get into something. But I've been lucky recently because I've won some prizes. I don't usually do drawings, especially for open exhibitions. Um, I usually just do my work and then try to fit what I'm doing into, into an open exhibition size and material, if there's a theme or anything. But for this one, I thought I might make one especially and try to submit for, for the football um, exhibition. The, these usually take six months to a year. Um, so but I, don't, I don't work out here where we are. I usually roll them up and do a section at a time. Um, so, that, so this is really the first time I've seen it properly unrolled, just slightly in progress. Often I don't look at them at all. I like to surprise myself after six months and see, see what I've done unrolling it. It's only when they're in a gallery and you see them on a white wall you really see what you've been doing and it's nice to have a gap after the work ends and if there's a if you happen to get into an exhibition if there's a six month gap or a year you can you can really then see what you've been doing. I usually have three drawings on the go at a time you usually have one on I do on Sundays, Tuesdays and Thursdays. So this is this is that one. And I've got another one I do on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays and I usually start one on Saturdays. So there's usually three three in progress. This is the image I I kind of borrowed from for the keyhole surgery. The um and all I when I first saw when I first looked I saw the figure surrounded by you know with the halo and other other religious figures and that just reminded me of a an operating table with a figure laying there you're going to be surrounded by people doctors and surgeons and all the rest of it ye olde keyhole surgery completely silly but kind of fun to do and um but I, it's called the dormition i didn't have a clue what dormition was or what it meant I even looked. I looked in the dictionary. I couldn't find it. Then I gave up because I. It didn't matter because I had the image. I had enough to make my drawing from, and I thought I'll worry about that later. Unless I stand in front of it, I can't even remember what I've put in myself. There are so many little references. There's even a reference to to Nigel Farage on the bottom right, to Brexit. Throw that in. While I'm drawing, I'm listening to the radio and something comes on the news, I might put that into the drawing in a small way. But that doesn't mean the drawing's about that, it just means the drawing is done at that moment in that year when, when that piece of news was happening. And I really made the, the central figure tiny on the table. It was, it was really tiny, it was like a little doll or something. And just, I added, added lo lots of other things from the story of art, just, um, bits and pieces just randomly because there's a there's an oval shape and I filled my oval shape with faces a bit like Sergeant Pepper cover full of faces I just went through this book and took faces as if the entire story of art you know is, is looking at this operation and there's angels and everything the biro it went lovely on top of the gold acrylic. It really drew lovely. You know, it's just a straightforward biro from Tesco's, but it went on nicely. This footballer one is a bit simpler, a bit more straightforward. I'll, I'll probably do another one similar to the keyhole surgery, but I tend to go from 
one type of work then I want to do something different straight afterwards and I go back again so I kind of get bored with my own work the materials don't cost anything really the burrows never run out and uh, the only problem is sometimes they fade a bit but um, art does fade art's, art's meant to fade <laughs> They were but not particularly encouraging at school, but I still went to the local art college, Braintree College, and did my art foundation course there when I was 16 till I was 18, did art foundation. If you, th you think you're a bit clever or if you, th if you think you're good, when you get to art college, you notice everybody is the same. Everyone's good and everyone's clever. They can all, they're all good, everyone's good at art. And you do some art history, which is where I got the story of art book from, which I still use now. And then I went on to Portsmouth Polytechnic to do the BA Fine Art, and I got heavily into abstract work, and I discovered people like Albert Irvin, and John Hoyland, and Gillian Ayres, and Jennifer Durrant, and lo lots of other people who were painting these, and a lot of American artists, Helen Frankenthaler, Pollock, Jackson Pollock, Rothko, you, you get to learn about all this stuff. I didn't know all this stuff existed. No one told me when I was at school, that's for sure. I think one art teacher came in once and tried to show us some Rothkos, which in a bad, bad reproductions in a book, you can't, you can't see anything. But that was just once. So when you go to art college, you start to learn about de Kooning and abstract work and ideas. It's only when you see something and you see it for yourself. I went up to see the Haywood, the Haywood Open and I saw some Albert Irvin paintings. All on my own, I was only like 20 and at the penny, you know, the penny dropped. I got it, I got it instantly. Why? This, this stuff is really good and it's not easy to do, you know, and a child could not do it and they don't just fling the paint around, it's all quite carefully done and the colours are carefully mixed. And after Portsmouth I went over to America to do my MA, MA in uh, fine art, postgraduate year in Illinois, which was good, I really enjoyed it. The only problem was it was in the middle of nowhere, they'd have these massive great universities in small towns, so the town was the university. But I got the bank, well, I got what I wanted, which was a studio space and some funding. And all I really had to do was paint full time, which is all you really want to do. Then I came back to Britain for eight years and got nowhere. So I went back to America and did another course, an MFA, which is their, their main, their main postgraduate course at MFA, still in Illinois. And again, I got the funding and the space, which is all I ever really wanted, whatever I did. I just wanted somewhere where you get some studio space and some funding for a couple of years. But people think it's like an apprenticeship. You do an art course, then you can be an artist, like taking driving lessons, then you can drive a car. It's not quite that simple. But, um, because the minute you leave art, art college, you're on your own. And the first... Monday morning, the 1st September that you've left, like, do you carry on? Do you carry on doing your art like you did in art school the previous summer? And well, I did. I, I got myself a, a little space here in the village, in a barn, and I carried on still doing it a lot and trying to get getting into shows, entering open exhibitions like I still do now. the opportunities are thin to try and to turn it into more than just a hobby. You know, you, people, people want to be artists with some kind of careers. So, um, but um, see, if you get into shows, you hope other galleries might show some interest. Not, not that they have actually, it's, um, in winning Trinity three times, I thought someone might have heard about my work, but it's still pretty quiet. <laughs> so um, God knows what you have to do to get, you know, galleries interested. I need to learn how to celebrate because I, I don't, I just go home and carry on the next day with the drawing I was doing. 
you stay even. You just carry on with the next piece. The, the one, and as for the, the recent Trinity winning, you know, first prize for the third time, I even thought of giving the money back. And I thought that's a bit flash. If you, a bit silly. I, if you get a job, you go for a job. At, you, know, you apply for a job. You're not going to give your wages to the people who didn't get the job. It's only sort of in my 50s started to win some major prizes, decent amounts. It looks like I get into shows, but I've had far more rejections. But you get so used to being rejected. And that's not personal, they just didn't like your work, you know. It's nice when you do get in, it's, it's direct. You submit something, they say yes or they say no. I don't have many, I don't have any contacts, so I, d I don't get invited into stuff hardly ever. Now and then someone mentions something, but most of the time I'm starting from scratch. After my studio, I had to um, adapt and find and bring everything back home here into my bedroom, which is the only space I've got, which, which is mine. I, I don't own the house, but this is the one space where you could say is mine, my stuff, my art, my cassettes. And this is where I do the work. My drawings, they're large scale drawings, and I roll them up and do a section at a time. And um, it would be nice to have a bigger space. I, pro I might do one day, but um, at the moment I managed to do the artwork and I even managed to do a painting here, which is an eight foot painting. And I've, I folded the canvas over, then rolled it and did it in sections. And I thought it would be a bad crease, but it didn't really notice. That one got into John Moore's, that painting. It didn't look creased, it didn't, it looked quite, it looked quite pricey, it looked quite slick and tasteful. I mean, it was, um, even though it shouldn't have done because it had been rolled up and creased and battered about, it looked a bit pleasant, <laughs> almost a bit too pleasant. But um, anyway, got into John Moore, so that was a bit of a thrill after trying for 38 years. Currently, I'm a, I'm a carer for my mother. I get a little bit of carer's allowance, and if you're wondering about the money thing, which is tiny, but it's a bit of pocket money every week. And then I get to do, I get all my jobs done about the house in the morning, and I get the afternoons and a bit of the evening to draw and do photography. Well, I'm pretty strict about my art time. After lunch, it's all washed up. I'm going to draw. Don't bother me. That's what I'm going to do. So that's my, that's my current routine, coming in here, putting on some music or the radio and um, doing, making the work. You can work in a small space, you can work on a low budget. Um, I think a lot of it's to do with your own imagination and your own drive. If it's, if it's in you, you're going to do it one way or the other, whether you make money, whether you win prizes or you don't win prizes. You're going to carry on doing it. 